I'm gonna head to start today. City Council. Uh, we got a lot to go over tonight, so we'll get started. And uh, we're going to stand, and Brother Albert Curry opens up with a word of prayer. We'll follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Tell God to come this afternoon. Thank you for another opportunity to gather here and pray for uh, the right vibes as we go about our meeting, as we come up with solutions and ideals to make our community better. We pray that you would bless all of our leaders, all of our citizens. We pray that you bless our nation and our state. God, we need you to take control of our hearts and our minds as we enter into this meeting. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Thank God. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands.
try to do something that encourage them more because we train them here. I used to have that problem at the school. We train them in somebody else's business because of the South. So please, everybody, keep that in mind. If, if we can increase it later, let's do it. I'm for it 100%. And also, on the proposal where you see the word certified, that means they went to, through the Alita Academy for 13 weeks. And it's not no easy thing. You get up early and you work. So that's a major accomplishment right there. Uh, I think you and the chief did a study. Yes, we, we've been working on this probably for a year and a half. So I think uh, in reference to what Brother Austin said, I don't know if anyone disagree with that, but I think you should do a study prior to the Yes. Uh, we have, uh, we got everybody here, just about, uh, or most of them here tonight. Uh, Y'all stand if you're not standing. Let's give them a good round of applause. Because the hand goes through the cancer treatments and everything, uh, they became more important because they've had to to take care of that department, and Anne is really dependent on why she don't have to worry. So you've got a good bunch now. We're uh, proud. We're too short on the full time, and this that you passed tonight will help us tremendously in uh, talking to people in our interview process. Uh, this will really help. All right, thank y'all. Okay. Uh, next, we'll start with the uh, citizens' communications. And Mr. Brad back there, uh, Brad Glass, y'all should remember him from 2020. Okay, Brad filled out a card, but he called me today because we've done sent the packets out, so he couldn't get on the agenda. But I have the information I have in my files. Uh, if you remember, he's with the uh, Park Baptist Church. They were trying to buy some land from us in 2020 from the city of Russia. Prescott. Councilman Hightower reminded the council that the first property appraised at 9690 Mayor Oliver said that the second parcel of land appraised for 11000 Councilman Curry made a motion to sell both properties for a combined total of 20690 Councilman Hightower made a second. On roll call vote, all 80s were recorded and the motion passed. And then um, there was two or three months we didn't even have meetings during 2020. So back in August, that was February, and then in August, uh, Brad came back. Mayor Oliver introduced Brad Glass, represent Park Baptist Church. Mr. Glass addressed the council about the land adjoining the church property and the church's efforts to purchase this property from the city of Prescott. Mr. Glass proposed different options for the church to buy the property. The price total price of $20,690, but there's 15 trees that need to be removed in order for the church to utilize the property. Mr. Glass said that the cost of removing the trees would be $7,500, and 
He proposed to pay $13,190 and have the remaining $7,500 to remove the trees. Mr. Blass also proposed to pay $20,690 in the city to remove the trees. He also stated that any outstanding liens would have to be taken care of by the city. City Attorney Glenn Vassar replied that there should not be any liens in the place on the property. Mr. Glass replied directly that the Maiden County Courthouse show liens in place, but they would check again to be sure. Council McCurry asked about any other bids for tree removal. Mr. Glass replied that Tim Wren was the only service he had checked with. Mr. Vassar said that the council should not reduce the price of the property by that large of an amount. Council McCurry asked about how the council needed to address this issue. Mr. Vassar replied that the council addressed this issue in February when a motion and second was made to approve to sell the property for the appraised value. Councilwoman Williams is in favor of selling the property for the reduced amount and let the church take care of removing the trees. Council McCurry says that the original motion to sell the property included the value of the land and the trees. Mr. Glass spoke about all of the expenses the church would incur and again said there were liens in effect. Mr. Vassar said that the liens were not in effect and were not enforceable. Council McCurry said it appears like the council will stay with the motion to sell that was approved in February. So we never made a deal. Uh, so Brad is back and uh, did you want to speak something on it, Brad? I mean, I just, I don't, I don't I have been in two years. I don't know where to stand the last time I sat over there. <laughs> uh, anyway, so j just Brad Glass on behalf of Bart Baptist Church, we're still interested in, in buying the land for future expansion, possibly whether it be parking, whether it be something for the youth, uh, as far as the youth center, you know, something like that. that that's real heavy on my heart, you know, the youth running around. If they're in the will of the Lord, they're a lot better off. Uh, so, our church had talked about it and gave me permission to come back with the, the interest of still wanting to buy the land. Uh, they gave me permission to throw out a number of $10,000. Uh, the, the land still not used, it's still maintained by the city you know, somewhat. Um, there are since since then there are four trees that are dead now two of them have fallen uh, there are four that are dead and you know I mean it would look better if it was cleaned up we'll take care of it just want y'all to know that we're still interested in the land still won't buy it. so that's all Thank okay you, appreciate you Brett okay um, that for both of our brothers yes sir yeah Okay, since we doing it on last uh, last second notice, do y'all want to take it until next month? Yeah. Uh, for yes. yeah, you can ask uh, Miss Hughes. Go ahead. There's a sewer line across that property that they'll need to be an easement to build for the bank to leave it there. It serves the rescue unit and the motorcycle, the old armor goes out across that property. It's been a long time. I would like to get a city attorney involved with okay. what we're doing. Well, Mr. Mayor, I would say that I agree with Mr. Vassar that you should, the city should not sell public property for less than its appraised value, or at least sell it close to its appraised value. Uh, you shouldn't sell it, expose public property and, and, you know, at, a, at a discount. Uh, I don't think that's proper. Also, this appraisal is four years old. If you were going to sell it, I think you ought to have the appraisal update to get a current. It probably hasn't appreciated much in value, but it's possible it has. And a a four-year-old appraisal is just out of date. I don't think the city should sell uh, public property at less than the price value. Or very close to it. And it looks like, just from my review of minutes, that the city agreed to sell the property and church chose not to go forward with that. Okay. So it sounds like you suggested we should get an appraisal, sell the property based on what? 
very close to the frame, very close to the frame value. to be an accountability as well somewhere 
and the law in some it's not mowed it's yeah, not just, just grown up it's grown up it's not you know we're not talking about somebody got mowed you know last week we're talking forage that is, that is allowing these rodents and insects to just multiply you can fix them in the house you can try to control them and there is no eradication i understand that but there is a better control we have a lot of out-of-town landowners okay. that don't really, out of, out of mind, out of sight. They're just city lots that have grown up, is that what we're talking about? <laughs> yes. That harvest property is like owned by people that don't live. That's just what you said. That's uh, what you said. Some of it owned by our citizens that just want more than others. You have a, a mowing ordinance. I just have to look at the orders to see what we can do. Maybe we might yeah, that's, provide that to me. That's what Mary was going to meet with you on part of it, the combinations okay. in that. Back to put a little more said, teeth in. You know, it, it's a shame, but I like to say this. You know, I, it bothers me. I, I, Right around and look, and I offer myself right now, I can't do it, but I offer myself to go around and cut some of these people, probably, that they don't want to do it. I don't know what have happened to pride. Our city years ago was a plain, nice, plain city. Pride. I don't know what we can have our club go around the community. I don't know when I get in trouble, tell them. Up. But you look all over town. It, it, the town shouldn't be like this. Right. And these people walk out of these houses and, and, and get all this stuff. I don't know what it is. I mean, we can, you can do so much, but you can't make raw people clean up. I mean, unless you put them in jail. But, but we, need to, we, need, we need to get groups in the community. Do something to get pride. Get people help me be back. Be proud of your city. Be proud to go and see them play a football game. Mm -hmm. We want you to be proud of keep your property up too. Right. I mean, it, it, it is really bothers me to see how uh, our town has got to shake the lead. I understand what you're saying. You put insects stuff all over the place, but people don't play it up. It's not helping. So we need to some kind of way, if we have to do it, you know, you've got a neighborhood watch, we need to do neighborhood pride or something. We get pride, make people feel proud of keeping our property up. I mean, this, this is ridiculous. We can pass all of these things we have, but people got to do something. And I, I'm going to be out of order, but it's going to be the same way for the whole country. We, we lose pride in our country.
Okay, thank you, Miss David. Uh, next, the other card, Mr. State.
we had a conversation with Saturday. There is so much in this community. There's food available. There's EBT cards available. Kids are sent with, with packages home. Uh, Brother Curry has a fee. Uh, the Assembly of God has a fee. Uh, Lane Williams, some people know her pretty well. The she, sir, she gets food packages and stuff out of the church. The ministerial alliance is working. We have discovered what we need to tell people where all these things are. I mean, I think we talked about it. Brother Curry was unaware of some stuff. I was unaware of it. We are going to put together a food information package where people can learn where to go get help. Uh, and we're going to we're going to, the Rotary is going to, uh, the businesses are going to start putting blessing boxes out where we can control them. The reason is, anecdotally, anecdotally, we'll walk down the street and y'all know the people that beg for food. They beg for food. Now, some of them look like they don't need to beg for food, but, and I'm not being ugly, but they, they do. Uh, they, they, you know, there, there are, but we'll, we'll, there are, there are people that really need the food and especially. So what we're going to try to do, we're going to put together a package, information, share the food system. Elderly people, we're all about it. We're, we're bringing food. I mean, this workers' meeting is an example of a community that takes care of its people. And that's where they have the lunch. We want to expand that program. So any ideas you have, we want to be a service club and serve the people of Preston. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. All right, next yellow card, Miss Jessica Box. I, I have a question to go to. got a question from Mr. Dixon. Do you have permission to run down so they can put it in the meeting? I will. Go to hell. I will be trusted. It won't be tonight. I've actually got to go to BFW. I'm going to go to that meeting now. So it's <laughs> Okay, next be Miss Jessica Box. Okay. Can you share the line? Uh, I just want to be a reminder of Juneteenth, June 19th is Juneteenth, and I'm having a celebration on the Courthouse Lawn. Everyone is invited. If you want to come out and sit out and just enjoy the scenery, it's there for you. We got bouncing house for the children. So I have a benefit from uh, the chief and the Hendricks, our students. We all have a benefit table for them. And I just want you to come out. See, see some faces in my eyes. Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Yeah, right here. Right it's going to be next at 11. I do have Mr. Wilson. That's the speaker. It's going to be, going to be a little problem, right? A little sunshine day and St. Tibble House is going to come out and sing for us. So it's going to be a little problem for you. Thank you. And that's Wednesday the 19th at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Yeah. And it's a fundraiser that. for uh, Chief Ann Jordan and Officer uh, Hendricks, too. Go ahead. I wanted to let everybody know what Juneteenth is about. Mm -hmm. Mr. Austin will tell y'all what Juneteenth is about. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. But for information, just in case if you didn't know, Juneteenth was a date that came about years ago when the slaves were free. They didn't get the word back to Texas until June 19th. 
you know, it's kind of like you come back to the United States. And when we got free from what? From then, we celebrate 4th of July, though. Mm -hmm. we, we free. So the same thing about June 19th, we free. All right, thank you, Mr. Austin. Okay, do we have any discussion or announcements from the council? I have uh, two events, one on the 26th, Wednesday, this Wednesday, 26th. We have uh, number 14, uh, Game Entertainment, down at the corner of Green Island Lane. So we'll have food, we'll have games. Uh, we will create a positive environment for our young people just for about three hours. And then uh, it's going to be from four to feeding on Mondays at lunch, feeding kids. He fed for like 70 the first time. Yeah. And that's the one thing that one of them. Okay, anybody got anything? Mr. Austin. On our drainage project, uh, I'm really concerned about what's going on with the drainage uh, project. Uh, they put me in new cover. The side of the ditches to me need to be concrete. Because if you don't, the water is going to erode the side, and if you bend it, it's going to erode up under the, the, the street if we don't put something to stabilize the soil. So I, I, I'm hoping we don't just leave it like that. I don't know, maybe you, I think you were looking well, at it. We, we've got to come over and do a punch list when it's all over with, so you can attend that too. Uh, and if it's not in the, uh, we would have to add and pay more money if, it's, if what you want is not in there. But uh, like I showed you, there's like 200 linear feet of concrete, but that's about all the concrete, so you know, if it's not where you want it, we would have to uh, a little more money. The reason why I'm saying that, 
if we don't address it now, <laughs> we're going to have a bigger problem later. And I think here in Canada have seen that too. If we don't address that, stabilizing that, I mean, we're going to have to end up doing the street because it's going to erode to the street. So I'm just saying uh, that's something that we need to look at, how we can do that. And that, that is something that we can't just let go back because, like I said, we need to do that what well, we got the crew in here. And oh, yeah. They're not going to get their last check till we're satisfied. But, but, but the other part, what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about, if we have to put some money in, will we be able to do that? Because we, 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 we got to do something to stabilize the street. We'll have to see how much money we're talking is. Prioritize and see. <coughs> but. Yeah, well, I didn't see a lot about the new town situation in the paper. Or the ministry. But we talked about that. And you got people with sewer bags up in the house. And, you know, why are we doing this? We need to look at prioritizing, you know, my money for the school. Yeah, that's a new time. It's not getting up anything to do with Are you talking about the uh, wildcat over here? Wildcat. Yeah. Well, I said new time. It's wildcat. That's what I have. Wildcat, bro. Wildcat. <laughs> wildcat. And the wildcat is a serious situation, I suppose. We don't need to tower the phone in one area when we've got the phone with sewer line. Sewer pipe back up. And they had uh, some convention that our phone was available. I talked to the very about that. They had a lot of fun available in the state of Arkansas for the water. Sewer projects. I mean, my thing is just to put time to try to get the other thing to be in there until you finish up on uh, what we got on now. So I'm just saying before we start spending more money on the project, I think we ought to evaluate important uh, money on the other council. Thank you.